Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a Jaws triple feature book review. Jaws is one of my all time favorite movies ever. Not just a horror movie, but favorite movie of all time. And I had never read the book. Recently, I saw this book at the bookstore and picked it up and decided to read this after I just rewatched Jaws for the millionth time. And uh, just so y'all know, if you come across this copy in a store and you go to pick it up, this is actually a condensed copy of three of his books. So it is abridged. And if you don't want that, don't get this book. I ended up listening to it on my Scribd app. So I got the full version. And while I was listening to it, I decided I wanted to read the real story of the shark attacks that inspired Peter Benchley to write Jaws. And that's what this book was for. There were shark attacks where people died in 1916 along the Eastern shore. And that's where the idea of Jaws came about. And I also wanted to read the story of the USS Indianapolis sinking because this is the story that Quint tells in the movie about the Navy ship he was aboard. It got torpedoed and he ended up spending four days in the ocean fighting off sharks. So now that I am properly terrified of the ocean and will never be sticking my pinky toe in there again, um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about these books. I want to go over them as quickly as possible because I have three. So let's just get into this. I'm going to start with Jaws and I'm going to go ahead and do this as spoiler free as possible. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and say that I did not love this book. The movie is so much better than the book and I think that's a pretty um, consistent feeling amongst people who have read the book and watched the movie. There's a lot of elements to the book that to me feel very uh, soap opery, soap opera-ish and uh, I feel like Steven Spielberg cut all of that junk out and left just the best bits of the book in the movie and expanded on the best parts of it. The book focuses more on the people of Amityville, especially Chief Brody and his wife and their relationship and then her relationship with others. Uh, and there's also stuff with the mob in the book that is not in the movie. And I found those bits to be, like I said, soap opera-y. I grew up watching Days of Our Lives and to me reading this book felt a lot like watching that show with like the mafia element and the, the craziness going on in the relationships. I feel like there was not much shark in this book. It was like shark light. The book does start out with a shark attack and there are a few um, attacks sprinkled throughout but I just feel like the shark really wasn't the main focus of the book. There's also a very odd relationship in the book. I don't want to give too much away, but there's a certain relationship in the book that made me feel really kind of dirty and gross seeing it played out. I felt like I was watching something happen that I really shouldn't be seeing and I just kind of wanted to like put it away and not think about it. Uh, I just really didn't like that part. Another thing that bugged me about the book is that the author kept calling the shark a fish and yes I understand sharks are fish but I felt like every time they said fish instead of the word shark it took away an element of scariness that it could have had and I feel like it kind of watered down the threat if that makes any sense. There were also weird racist elements in this book. I understand the book is written in the 70s and things were different back then but the racist elements in the book really made no sense to the story and it was definitely jarring. It would pull you away from the story um, and I will tell you one of them because I don't think it's a spoiler because neither of these characters are in the book at all for any other reason. So the story is going along with all the characters that you know and then all of a sudden it's a scene with a grandfather and a grandson and the grandson is saying, you know, granddad, tell me a story. And the granddad says, no, uh, why don't you tell me a story? And the boy starts talking about killer sharks. And the granddad is uncomfortable with the boy talking about uh, killer sharks. And he's like, oh, that's not the nicest thing to talk about. Why don't we come up with a different story? And then the little boy asks the grandfather, do sharks eat black people? And then the book continues on and there is no other mention of this grandfather and son in there anywhere else. They're not a part of the story. It was just really bizarre. Uh, so anyway, 
I did enjoy the shark attacks, but that's pretty much all I liked of the book. So I'm going to have to give this book two stars, two and a half, maybe. I really didn't enjoy it. Um, and I would totally recommend watching the movie instead. Next, I'm going to talk about Close to Shore. This is historical nonfiction, like I said, about the 1916 shark attacks. I finished this about two weeks ago, so I'm going to try to remember this the best I can. But I want to say that there were four people who died and one more was um, severely injured or maimed. Uh, this book was really great. This book reminded me of the documentary show, The Men Who Built America. I think it was on the History Channel. Uh, I loved this time period. It went really deep into what life was like in 1916 why people thought the way they did, why they did what they did, um, their ideas on sharks and the ocean and just putting on bathing suits. The author did a great job of getting you to know the people who were attacked and how the attacks played out. I thought it was done very well. I even cried during the last attack. There were a couple of moments of um, heroism that really got to me. Uh, and so yeah, the last attack kind of messed me up and it made me very sad. Uh, but yeah, this book did a wonderful job of explaining those shark attacks and the time period. I used to only read historical fiction for a couple years and I have it in a while and this book made me realize how much I miss reading about historical things, either fiction or nonfiction, doesn't really matter. So I am definitely glad I read this. I'm gonna go with four stars with this one because it can be a little dry in some parts, but again, I really like that sort of thing. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is In Harm's Way. <sighs> uh, I don't know how to do this one justice. So this is a nonfiction book about the USS Indianapolis, which was a naval ship during World War II in the Pacific that got hit by Japanese submarine torpedoes and was sunk. 900 men went into the water and only around 300 men came out. Those men who were in the water spent four days fighting off sharks, not having food, not having water, being delirious, going crazy. A lot of them committed suicide. I thought I understood the story of the USS Indianapolis. I had heard of it before. This book really opened my eyes to the tragedy how our government played a huge part in what happened to these men. It made me full of rage. It made me cry for days. I had to take a break from it for a while. When the men were finally rescued, I took a few days off before I finished it thinking, okay, I'm good now. They're all safe. I can resume this book. But then it talked about what happened to the ship captain after the rescue and I continued to cry until the last page of it. I would totally recommend this book. Uh, I think it's a must read. I would have it as required reading. I think I'm going to have my kids read it. The author did an amazing job of explaining what was happening and getting you to know the people who were in the water, uh, what their lives were like, what they were thinking and feeling. And so when things would happen to them, you were just devastated. It was like losing your friends. I'm getting upset talking about this. But yeah, it was so realistically written. It felt like watching it in real time. So yeah, I would recommend going into this book, uh, being prepared to be devastated and feeling all kinds of things. Uh, but I will definitely be picking up more books by this author. I think he writes a lot of uh, military type books and I am definitely interested in reading more of what he has. I felt really connected to the people in this book because my grandfather was in the Pacific in World War II, my dad was in Vietnam, and my husband is also a disabled vet. So I just kept thinking of them while reading this and I was definitely connected to this story. Five stars absolutely top-notch amazing read if you are interested in sharks shark attacks ocean tragedies i would definitely recommend watching the movie jaws or reading these other two books if you have any books about sharks that you love or you think i should read or movies or shows that you think i should watch let me know that down below i'm gonna go ahead and get off of here i hope you all have a wonderful day and stay out of the ocean